Our company had a red team, blue team exercise this week. Now I learned a lot and I struggled a lot. So much so that I'm rethinking all my life choices. Meaning our company went through a penetration test and I don't think my boss was very happy with the results. Now I could be overthinking things, but I'm curious what you all think. Now I obviously don't know exactly what the red teamer did as they keep a certain level of secret sauce behind what their approach is when they're penetration testing, but we did have a dedicated blue teamer from the penetration company that helped us track down exactly what the red teamer was doing. So let's get started. These are the events that transpired this past week. Penetration testing kicked off an alert came in with a process injection on a very common process. Now, just my luck, I was the unsuspecting schmuck who picked up the alert. Now, I knew going into the week that we were gonna have this penetration testing going on, but this was a low severity alert that we get all the time. So I treated it like any other alert and I just did my usual investigation process. Check the process that it flagged on, all the associated hashes. I checked surrounding network and DNS logs. There were two benign network connections and nothing in the DNS queries to raise any suspicion. And I thought I was on a roll having done the last few alerts pretty quick. And I just wanted to keep the ball rolling. So I closed the alert saying something like flag process is a Microsoft distributed process, benign. So the hash is said. Now I'm getting excited on how efficient I'm being. I'm averaging like 30 minutes per alert, which I'm sure some of you are gonna say is slow in the comments. My last two hour crowd strike alert got a handful of flack from a few of you and you're not wrong so anyways i'm about to go to lunch and i get a call from my boss nearly crapped my pants as i'm sure all of you do when you get an unexpected call from your boss in the middle of the day he says to me very nicely i might add hey i think you might need to take a look at that alert you closed out don't tell anyone i told you though uh so i go back i reopen the ticket alert and lo and behold, there's a process that was injected into this Microsoft distributed process that was in fact a Python script a few minutes prior to the, its execution. Meaning that the process that was flagged wasn't the problem, it was the extra crap that was put into it that also executed, or at least attempted to execute, alongside this not malicious process. Now, why did I miss this glaring red flag? I think about it every night. I think the reason that I missed it if I was to make any excuses for myself, is just a severe lack of understanding of the baseline in, this, in the environment still. I'm still learning about all the tools and how it's displayed to me when I'm going into the tools. So I know if I saw this process and it was connected, like this is connected to this, to this, I would probably notice and be like, that shouldn't be connected to that. But the way it was displayed, it was Python. And then a few lines down, there's this other process that is Microsoft distributed processes. And that's what it flagged on. So how I was seeing it was a little confusing. If ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> so long story short, I'm fired. <laughs> no, not yet. Close an alert associated with red teaming. I then had to go back and reopen it and push it through our escalation process following our company policy, which is this shiny red button that creates a Zoom channel and invites everybody to be like all hands on deck, including the CISO. This kicked off a roughly six hour investigation that day and every day following for the entire week. We effectively ignored all low severity alerts just to have all hands on deck onto this red team, blue team exercise so everybody could gain some experience and maybe learn something new. What did we do in the six hours that we had an all hands on deck meeting? We queried, we queried our ass off. We went into the scene, we went into the EDR, we went into our other EDR. We documented findings as they came in. So we had this timeline that we found hackers here, hackers here, hacker did this to get into here. Now the point of the exercise was not to necessarily stop any of the hacks, but instead follow them around and be able to track and know exactly where the quote unquote hacker would be if this was a you know a real threat situation. We followed IPs, we followed host names, session hijacked IDs, usernames, malicious DLL injections. We queried specific processes that the red teamer used to inject malicious code into benign processes. Basically the entire time during these meetings, the blue teamer would tell us how they would go about finding the quote unquote hacker in our environment and how they would find lateral movement and find out exactly how they were able to exploit and break in. And at the end of the day, the company would provide a 30 minute presentation to discuss their findings, the vulnerabilities they found, remediation and fixes that they would recommend that the company would do to fix these problems. A few of them basically said this vulnerability is easy to exploit and escalate privileges to admin, but had an easy fix. I could tell my boss was not happy about that because it was a very high risk vulnerability. And as the red teamer put, it's a simple fix. But the saving grace, as the red teamer put, was network segmentation. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept, it's basically when networks are segmented into entirely different subnets, thereby effectively 
one subnet or network can't touch another subnet or network. And there's also port security backed behind it. So if you tried to access this other quote unquote network, it would block it. So while the red teamer was able to escalate their privileges, they weren't able to actually get into a root network or an other network where they could use those admin privileges to effectively do anything, really. <laughs> My Cisco professor in college would be so proud of the company. Now, if you ever felt pressure at work, I don't think it comes close to sharing your screen in front of your boss who had to call you when all of this started to tell you you fucked up and all the other analysts are in the call and the blue teamer is asking you, how would you pivot or continue to investigate now? And you're just sitting there fresh off of the college boat, like a deer caught in headlights, like me at a Russian church party. I'm just grasping at straws. Uh, I would check the user accounts we know are infected. So that was me yesterday in the hot seat. I think the cherry on top was at the end of the day, the COO of the company had a user click permitted alert that came in, meaning they clicked the link in a phishing email that I had to pick up because I was one of two analysts left at the end of the day. I was not able to find any network traffic in our logs that indicated that the COO had actually visited the click. And normally we don't reset a password unless we can definitively prove, oh, they did in fact click this. So I was thinking this is a false clicked alert, but luckily a senior analyst got to come in and save me yet again and find the user click in network connections logs. So my boss's boss had to get involved in the remediation since executive people in the company have their passwords reset delicately, to put it nicely. <laughs> that was my past week. I've never been so overwhelmed at work in my life. Don't be surprised if I post a I just got fired video because that's where my glass half empty mind goes when shit hits the fan. Or even a I quit my cybersecurity job video because I've got big side hustle plans that I've been neglecting all my YouTube videos for. So if you want to know more about this lovely experience, I'm always happy to answer questions down below. Please leave a like so my channel grows faster than my friends. They're catching up and I have my last remaining self-respect on the line. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for my next actual worst day in the life of a SOC analyst video. See you in the next video.